yeah, I think disappointed and frustrated a bit. Um, uh, however, uh, also proud of the way we played. Uh, and and listen, this is this business is about collecting points and and not just about performances. Um, but clearly, I think that was a showcase of the way that we can play when we're at our best. So um, we've had a number of games where we've been on top of things, been the better team, and we don't find ways to get the goals that we deserve in those moments, and then it keeps the opponent around or gives them the chance to, to find a goal or to, to find the lead, which makes the game and the, the sport feel very uh, cruel. Um, but in the end, it's what it is, and we have to get better in the final third and capitalize on chances. Yeah, I mean, we knew that the the workload for the pos for that position in the match was going to be heavy, um, and so the idea was that we were going to trade Rodrigo and Patrick no matter what, and we just decided to do it at halftime. Um, obviously, Rodrigo makes the choice to play this big switch that is not normally what we'd like to do, and it leads to a moment that costs him and the team. But in general, um, you know. Rodri's had a good run of form with us, and we need him. You know, we and we need him to get hot. We need Patrick to get hot. We need guys to to score goals. So, um, you know, I, I obviously I'm disappointed for Rodri, but in the end, we still he's an important guy. Yeah, I think we. Well, I think part of it was that we pushed the tempo so high in the first half that it was a lot for them to handle after travel and everything. Um, yeah, I mean, we were better. You know, we were better on the day, but it, we were walking away with nothing. So, we again, we've got to find ways to, to take the good things and have it add up to, to results. I have no idea. I haven't, I haven't really been able to figure out who was given the red, what ha is too far away for me to see wild. Some of these decisions and, you know, I mean, even the fact that the, the the for me the penalty should have been called right away. It was clear, but yeah, we're we're on the wrong end of a lot of these right now. But I'm not going to comment too much on the referees. Great. Uh, Jack in the ten tonight looked very creative. Were you considering that for a while? Well, we're getting better at understanding what the behaviors and habits are, and then we can manipulate the tactics to find ways to to challenge teams. Um, I thought the match plan was really good. Brendan and Jack came to me at halftime and said, what if we switched our roles? And so we decided to do that. I said, okay, let's put Brendan more in the in the middle and, and Jack a little bit more on the right and see if Brendan can help with some of the pressing moments. And he was fantastic at that moment. Um, so, you know, we have flexibility in, in, in some of the group and in, in what we have. Um, and, and now they're getting smarter and, and they're getting better at understanding exactly what we want to look like. And, and then it gets... Um, then it creates more flexibility in what we can do. So I thought the match plan was uh, was very good, and I thought the execution was outstanding. What do you make of Patrick's performance? Because obviously he's missed chances on a penalty, but he seemed to change the game with his presence. Yeah, I think so. And I think, you know, the thing with Patrick is that I said even in the press conference this week is if, if a striker's not getting chances, then you're more worried about than if he's missing them. Obviously a penalty winds up being more of like a psychological issue than even a, when you miss the frame than, than even a quality issue. Um, but I feel like Patrick's coming into form. He's looking physically strong, and now hopefully we can develop a rhythm with him and we can be a different team if he, if he can catch on fire. Well, I, I think we the first half of Crystal Palace was also outstanding. We should be up 3-0 in that match, right? We should be up, uh, we should win this game. So, again, for me, it's easy. And, and I tell you, in Brentford, we had some good moments. Brighton, for me, first half was terrible. But then second half was actually really good, and we were unlucky not to get back in the game then. Everton, Villa, Villa, we get the red card, but still we manage. Okay, maybe we could win at the end, but we can't cap. We're not capitalizing. And it puts stress on the environment. So... I have to stay calm and patient, which I hate. I hate being patient. <laughs> Detest maybe is a better word, but I have to. I have to because I see, the, I see the good work that's getting done and I see the progress being made, 
but it, at, at some point here it's got to start to add up to more results so that we can really develop momentum but you know the league is difficult the league is difficult and, and it challenges you in every way Yeah, I mean, you could have said it was uh, a little bit asymmetric with a f with four two three one, or you could have said a four three three. You could have said a diamond. We were manipulating how to press and close down spaces and and try to eliminate their ability to to play with combination on the wing and then hit the other side. At, when it was good, it was incredibly effective. Uh, when they were able to play with some good combinations and quality, it put a stress on us a little bit on the other side of the pitch, but. Um, Again, um, I think tactically, performance-wise, in a lot of ways, we were better today. We were better. Thank you. Phil, yep. Do you think it suits your team to be able to go forward to develop sides in the way that you did in Chelsea? And then the other two coming straight against you? Um, well, different teams are going to have different ideas of how they want to handle our intensity and our pressing. Some go long. Some sit deep and give us the ball. Um, some try to play through us. Some try to play big switches. And we have to continue to build um, tactical sophistication and understanding as to how to handle every moment. Um, we're getting there. Um, you can, you know, I mean, even today, even first half, there's some really good moments where we win balls and we have chances to maybe create something that doesn't quite come off. So um, I think it suits us to continue to understand exactly what the opponent is trying to do and then exactly how we want to handle it and then to continue to play with confidence and belief and understanding and discipline for exactly what we want every game to look like and how that fits within our style of play and our tactical model and the closer and closer that we get to that the more and more we'll be able to control matches yeah I would have said Palace as well I would have you know I, I don't think we've played I would have said Villa even with the performance uh, to, to a man down not to give much away but in the end again we need to score goals we have to score goals we'll do a final one for Stuart so Jesse with that in mind what made you have to strike the full pass this week does it have to be critical of them for the, for the finishing or positive it has to be balanced but I think we will take this away and be very encouraged um, and again, you know, I mean, you know, it's such a crazy game, such a crazy game today with so many things happening in that match. Um, and so obviously when I sit here now, I'm filled with emotion in every direction. But uh, I'll take some time. I'll look at the video. We'll regroup. We'll find out physically who's ready to go. Again, we're, we're physically looking strong and healthy and fit. Um, and we've got to we've got to use the the next matches to find ways to get more out, more points out of it because that's important for us right now in our season. Just right, we'll, we'll leave it there. Well, you sure, Jordan? Yeah, we'll I don't mind. Otherwise, we're not to go around everyone. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry. You haven't spoken about what happened at the start of the game with the delay. What was explained to you? What happened? What was your thoughts? I think there was a surge of power which put out the referee system and the VAR and then the, the goal line technology and everything. And so they thought that they could get it all back online, but it would take some time. And there was a moment in there where it was possible that we were even going to play without VAR. But they got it all together. So not an easy day for the referees and the administrators to handle, but I think they did a good job. Would you have been happy with that proceeding without VAR? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right.